In today's tutorial, we're going to tackle a JavaScript problem. We're going to look at a couple of different ways you can count how many times each value appears in an array. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe, and remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I really appreciate the support. And if you'd like, there are other ways to support the channel, which are linked to in the description as well. For example, if you provide support through Patreon, you can get access to all the code files. And for a list of all the tutorials I've done, which are over 230 now, you can go to the website. Now, the idea for this tutorial came from a Medium article I read by Dylan Sangeeth. That article showed handling the solution one way, but I wanted to try another way. So in this tutorial, we'll be looking at the for each method, which was one method of tackling this, the reduce method, which is the one I wanted to try. And as a part of the reduce method, we're going to look at the comma operator to help solve the problem. Now, if you need a refresher on any of these, or if any of these are new to you, I've covered these commands or these methods and the comma operator in previous tutorials, which I'll link to in the description. So let's take a look at the problem and then we'll look at a couple of ways to solve it. So here I have an array of scores. And if you look at this, some of the scores are here more than once. These are scores say that we receive from a bunch of students taking uh, an exam or something. And we want to find out how many times each score was received. For example, the 60 here, I believe, is four times. And then there's a couple of scores that are just a couple of times. So how would we go about doing that? Well, the, the idea is here that we want to create an object. And that object for each key, which will be each score, we're going to turn each score into a key. Then we'll have a number indicating how many times that score is within the array. And so the end result will be an object with properties. The key will be the score and the number following will be the count. So that's what we want to try to do. Now, I want to first present a solution that's probably the easier of the solutions to understand. And this is using the for each method. The for each method is a method of arrays that allows us to go through each element of the array and apply that element to a function that we pass in. So for each is higher order. We pass a function in and then it automatically cycles through the array, passing the value of each element into that function that we provide. So here's what we're going to do. First thing I want to do is set up an object here. This is going to be the end result. So right now it's an empty object. There's nothing in it. Then we will cycle through the array. And as we encounter new scores that we haven't encountered before, we will make them a new property in the object and add a count to it. So let's look at how we would do that. So for each, since it's a method of arrays, we would use it by doing scores dot for each. And then here's where we pass in the function. So this function needs to have a parameter because that parameter is going to contain each of the scores as we cycle through that array. So that will get stored in val. And then let's see what we're going to do with it. Well, we're going to take this object and we're going to assign a property this property is going to be the score that's passed in to the object. And what is it going to equal? Well, we're going to set that equal to one of two things. Either the count that already exists. So if we've already encountered the value, it will be in the object. And so we'll get the value from that. So this, this side here sets up the actual key to the property. All right, and this will set up the value. And so it's going to grab the value, some number associated with that key, if that exists. If it doesn't exist, then we'll set the value to zero, like that. 
So it's only either going to get the existing value or it's going to get zero if it's a brand new score that we've encountered. Then what do we do at this point? Then we want to increment that. So if we're starting with a zero, of course we want to increment it to one because we have at least one score. If it's something else, we'll still increment it. And so that's why we have the plus one there. And I can see I got one of my parentheses messed up there. Remove that there, put it at the end here for the for each method. All right, and then we'll just close out with a semicolon. All right, let's save that and take a look and see what we get here. So if I jump out here and refresh the page and then take a look at element count, we see we are getting an object here and it consists the scores that's the properties in the object, each of the scores, and then we have a number associated with that. 60, as I mentioned, is four times, it's showing up four here, and then some of the others are more than once. But we do have some scores that are a single time. So that worked great for us. Now, I love using the reduce method, and so I wanted to tackle this with the reduce method. I think uh, it is so flexible, the things you can do with the reduce method. Now the reduce method, like the for each method, is a method of arrays, and so we would enter it the same way. What it's going to return is something. We're gonna take this array and we're gonna turn it into something using reduce, and that's what's going to get returned. And so we want to store that in a variable. And I'm gonna use the same variable here, element count. But this time we're setting that equal to scores.reduce, like this. Now, just as with for each, reduce requires us to pass in a function. And then it will cycle through each element in the array and hand it to that function and then that function will process it. Now, one thing about reduce, that function that we pass in will have at least two parameters. One is the previous value. So as we're cycling through these values, it's doing something with them that gets returned to the next time we cycle through. So say we do 90 first, we do something with it, then whatever we do with it will be placed in the accumulator value, this parameter here for the next iteration when we work on 60, okay? So what we wanna do, we wanna do the same approach, but this is going to be an object and we'll just keep adding to that object as we go through. Then the second parameter is the actual value, the actual element in the array itself. So those are the two parameters we need. And then what are we going to do with them? Well, and here's where things diverge a bit. And I'm going to use a comma operator to, to fix this a bit, but I need to use curly braces here, which is not something that we normally do when we use an arrow function because this arrow here indicates an automatic return. But when we use curly braces, then we have to specify what is return. But I need to use curly braces because I need to do two things. I need to process the value and add it to the object. And then I need to return the resulting object. So those are two things that I need to do. So if I do the accumulator value here, which is going to be an object, and we'll do very similar to what we did up here. We're going to set that equal to the accumulator value. So that object, that property, if a value exists in it, we're going to return that or zero. So very similar to what we did up above, but this time we're using reduce. And then I'm gonna add one to that so it increments it correctly. And then we will return that object. Now, why couldn't we have done this without the curly braces? Well, if we would have just had this statement here, what it would have returned was the count. And that's not gonna work for us. We need it to return the object so it can come here and then we can add to it in the next iteration. Then come here again, add to it in the next iteration and so on. And so that's how we would do this with reduce. Now, reduce requires us, or doesn't require us, but we can pass in an initial value for this parameter here. Now the initial value is going to be an empty object, just like we did up here when we declared element count, okay? 
So that initial value is going to be an empty object and then we'll add to it, return it, add to it, return it, and so on until it's, it's done. And then we'll get the results. So let's see how that one worked for us. So if we save that and we'll refresh this again and then look at element count, we see we're getting the same thing. So that works for us. Now, this was my first solution using reduce, but I thought, why can't I do this on one line? One thing I like about reduce is there's so many things I can do on one line. And sometimes I just do that for a challenge, but I wanted to see if I could do this on one line. And the way we could do it, we still need to do both parts of this, but the way we can do that is using the comma operator. All right, now the comma operator evaluates each of its operands from left to right and returns the value of the last operand. So since we wanna return this, if we separated these two things with a comma operator, this would be the last thing that is returned and we could remove the curly braces, we could, re we could remove the return statement and we could have that on a single line. So let's look at how we would do that just so you can see the application of the comma operator. All right, so I'm going to move that up to the same line. And then let's get rid of this stuff here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place a parentheses there and then a parentheses here at the end. So we can keep separate what's part of reduce this comma here is going to separate the arguments going to reduce. This is the initial value that will go into that. Now here inside of this expression, here's where I'm going to use the comma operator. And then I'm going to put ACC val as the second expression. So this part will be performed and then this will be performed, which is just the value of the object itself. This one gets returned, so that gets placed here, ready for the next iteration. All right, let's go ahead and save that. Refresh, and then if we take a look at element count, we can see it's working for us. So just another way to use the reduce method, but this time we're using the comma operator so you can see how that works. And remember, the comma operator evaluates each of its operands from left to right, and then returns the value of the last operand. All right, please hit that like button and subscribe. Remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can, and Thanks for watching.